All right, kids. So we have reached the New Testament. So the Old Testament and the New Testament, that's how the Bible is divided. Remember, the Old Testament are the books that are written before Jesus. The New Testament are written after Jesus came. So we're looking at book number 39, which is the last book of the Old Testament. And we're looking at book 40, which is the first book in the New Testament. Now, you've got to sit down. Come on, sit down. That's it. Yeah, like everybody else, okay? 40 is the first book of the New Testament. So that's one of the first Gospels. So we're going to look a little bit into this one and we're going to talk a bit about Malachi. So Malachi is the last minor prophet in the Old Testament. And like many of the other minor prophets, what were they prophesying about? The sin of Israel and Judah, right? The sin of God's people. And Malachi was the same. Malachi was also preaching against their sins. Many of the wickedness that they were doing, the idolatry and the wrong things that they were doing. Hello. So he was preaching against the things that they were doing. They were also defiling God's temple. But Malachi, because he was the last minor prophet, he also prophesied about the one that was going to come, like all the other minor prophets, that Jesus would come and redeem God's people. And one of the passages that Malachi is famous for is Malachi prophesied also about the coming of John the Baptist, the one that would come before Jesus to prepare the way for the Lord to come in the flesh. Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, Behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. So there was somebody coming before. Atticus, don't distract, please. Sit quietly, listen. He says, I will come. There's some, there's still going to be somebody coming before Jesus comes. That's what Malachi was talking about. Let's read this one together. You ready? Malachi chapter 3, verse 1a. Behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. So you see how there's a messenger coming before the Lord comes, which was the Lord Jesus Christ. Now after the book of Malachi, it was written about 400 years before Jesus came. This was the last prophecy before Jesus came and then the New Testament was written. So 400 years there was no prophecy. There was no revealed word of God for 400 years until John the Baptist comes. John the Baptist was the messenger that came before Jesus. And you know, John the Baptist, what do you think he was sent to do? Who knows? You can tell in his name, Simon. That's right. He was sent from God to baptize people in water. And remember, the baptism represents what? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. I don't know whether John really knew that at the time. He might have. But he was putting people in the water and he, he was sent to baptize them because he knew somebody coming after him was going to baptize with the Holy Ghost. And this is what the water represented. Now, you know, even Jesus, when he came, we don't know if that's what he looked like, but this is a picture of some, that somebody drew. Even when he came, he came to be baptized by John the Baptist. And you know what John the Baptist said when he saw Jesus? He said, I'm not even worthy to untie the shoelaces of his shoes that he wears. He says to Jesus, I, I need you to baptize me with the Holy Ghost and you're coming to me to be baptized? And Jesus says, hey, this is part of the plan of God, part of righteousness for Jesus to fulfill the commandment to be baptized. So John the Baptist even baptized Jesus when he came. Now, when Jesus started his ministry now, you know what happened to John the Baptist while Jesus was here and he was preaching, he was healing people? John the Baptist was thrown into prison. Why was he thrown into prison? Because he was telling the king that the king was doing something evil. 
He was doing something wrong. He was committing fornication you know, with his brother's wife. Adultery, possibly. So he had his brother's wife and because John the Baptist preached against the king, the king had him thrown into jail. Now this is while Jesus is still is on the earth. He's doing his ministry. But at the time, John the Baptist is in jail. Man, that's tough, isn't it? You're thinking, well, Jesus is here. The prophecy is fulfilled. But how come I'm in jail? John the Baptist started to doubt when he was in jail. And you know what happened when he was in jail? It wasn't a positive ending. You know what happened? There was a party. The king held a party. And one of the, the daughters of his queen danced for the king, and the king was pleased, and the king made a silly promise. He said to the daughter, if you ask me for anything, I'll give it to you, to the half of my kingdom. You know, they say that because you can't ask for more than half and take over the king's authority. So he says, I'm going to give you anything to the half of my kingdom. And you know, the queen who hated John the Baptist, which was the wife of the king, said to her daughter, I want you to get John the Baptist killed, I want his head cut off and put on a charger, put on a plate. And that's what happened to John the Baptist. So in prison, because the king couldn't go back on his promise, he had John the Baptist killed, beheaded. Why? Just because an evil queen asked her daughter to ask for this request. And that's how John the Baptist died. But when Jesus preached about John the Baptist, you know what he said about John the Baptist when people asked him about John the Baptist? When he heard about John the Baptist being beheaded, this is what Jesus said about John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 11, verse 11a. He says, Verily, truly, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, that's all of us, all of us are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Wow, so think about that. A man that came, he was sent to baptize. John the Baptist didn't perform any miracles. Remember when we learned about some of the prophets? He, they did all sorts of miracles. John the Baptist did no miracle. He was thrown into jail for preaching against the king and while he was in jail, what happened? He lost his life while Jesus was here. So that doesn't sound like a very triumphant life when we look at it. But when Jesus talked about John the Baptist, he said, amongst those of us who are born, which is all of us, he's saying there's nobody greater than John the Baptist. So let me ask you, kids, what made John the Baptist so great? If he didn't even do any miracles. Right? Because never, normally when we think of a prophet, we think, wow, oh, look at it. Like we think of Elijah, great miracles they did. What do you think? He obeyed God. He obeyed God. That's right. And why, how did he obey God? By pointing people to Jesus. See, that's what his ministry was. He was the messenger that came before the Lord to point people to the Lord. And when he baptized people, he said, hey, there's one coming after me. That is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. He's the one you have to believe on, not me. So if you want to be great like John the Baptist, what do you have to do? You have to point people to Jesus, don't you? We have to tell people about Jesus that they need to believe on him, not on themselves. Okay? All right, so that's a little bit about Malachi, the last minor prophet, and a bit about John the Baptist. Next week we're going to learn more about Jesus as we look at his life in the Gospels. Okay, today we've got some games. I think we're going to play, let's play a first game outside. We're going to go outside, we're going to play one game outside, and then we're going to come back inside. Okay, go pee quickly.